So the whole thing's been giving a good dousing in uh, penetrating oil. And hopefully that will uh, make it a lot easier for us to take the screws off. So we'll take all the easy bits off first. That, that was actually loose, the safety valves. So this is this looks like it's going to come off okay. The whistle. Yeah, no problem. We need a small adjustable for... The main steam pipe. Hopefully that will go wide enough. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And quite often these are screwed in. I think that one is, there we go, yeah. Great, okay. So, let's see what we can do here. That's, that was already loose, the uh, crank pin. Um, not sure about that one. I don't know whether that's gonna, oh yeah, amazing. Whether that will actually come off the shaft or not, I don't know. Um, let's see. Is this likely to move? Mm, not sure about that. Let me get some pliers. Well, with a little bit of help from <laughs> the old mole grips, this does appear to be coming off. The screw. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Nice and free. So that's okay. All right. So next up, we got to attempt to attack these screws. Oh, let's see if we can get that off. Yeah. It'll be a bit of work, I think. Right. Bring in the big guns. It's just, I think it's just crud that's on the crank, and it's, um, oh, there we go. Right, so the next stage is the screws. Um, I'll turn it over for that, I think. So I'm going to attack the two that hold the, the engine mount first. Um, they seem to be the biggest ones on here, which is should should make them easier oh it's going yes excellent well, penetrating oil did its did its trick on that I think definitely let's hope that this one won't be so yeah there we go Yeah, so there's the little, it's just tin plate folded up. A couple of screws in there for the for the engine plate, which hopefully will come off. That's one of them. These aren't corroded and they're into brass, so they should be okay. Yeah. So, there's the engine plate. Good, so far, so good. I think before we go any further, um, I will very gently attempt to take the sight glass out because I just know I'm going to break that otherwise. Well, it looks like these are loose anyway. I haven't put a, put a spanner on them. I just undo them with my fingers, so. There we go. Let's take those off of there. We've got an intact side glass. Excellent. Okay. Right. So we have 
the four screws here. Oh, let's put it in shot so you can see what I'm talking about. Four screws here, which hold the boiler strap in place, and that should allow me to remove the boiler and the firebox in one go. So, yeah, that one. That one has been replaced at some point because the the screw comes through from this side and the nuts on the top so that, all the others around the other way so let's see if we can get these to turn there's quite a lot of crud in the actual screw uh, yeah that's turning but so is the nut Need to get a spanner for those, but we'll try the others. Yeah, that's turning, but so is the nut. And that is turning and it's coming unscrewed. Excellent. So hopefully these can these screws and nuts can be salvaged and clean cleaned up. I'm sure they can be. That one's the other side. So. Again, come and unscrew. Excellent. Okay, so it's just these two that I need to get get a spanner on. Well, those came out fairly easily, so we can. Uh, there we go. Nuts and bolts holding the straps, holding the boiler onto the firebox, and then you can see the, how the uh, heating element is attached. Uh, mica there, iron plate by the looks of it. So, yeah, I'm I'm not going to disturb the heating element. I should hopefully be able to get away without doing that. I'll simply undo these these nuts here that connect the heating element to the pins on this this connector, and then I can take the rest of this apart. So, yeah. So I've removed the element connection, so that's that's now free of the, of the connector. And we'll just take these screws and nuts off now, and that should allow us to separate the firebox and the boiler. And I probably won't disassemble the boiler any further because there's not really any need. Um, I can clean it up, uh, work around the heating element. Um, the heating elements are very delicate on these and, and, and it just, if you can avoid disturbing them then I, I, I seriously would, would do that. Got some little star washers there, that's good. Yeah, soaking it in, in penetrating oil was obviously it was obviously a good 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 move because I haven't really had any serious trouble with any of the of the nuts and bolts. So yeah, there you can see the see the firebox and the kind of the kind of state that it's in. Uh, I'll need to strip in of the paint. I'll take all this off. Take the uh, maker's mark off. Uh, boiler straps are okay, but I think they're nickel plated. So again. They'll, they should clean up fairly well and uh, as I said the boiler is in is in fairly good condition so uh, I probably won't take this off I'll simply just clean up around it but this is where the uh, construction is kind of a bit strange bearing in mind that we've had all nuts and bolts and screws so far the crank mount is actually these are rivets so I'll have to um, obviously drill those out but uh, as you can see it's in a pretty pretty appalling state you know base but we'll get all that rust off the vinegar will deal with that no problem at all and any paint that's left on we'll use the old oven mate on it and that'll get that off and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be good to uh, start all the repaint <laughs> 